I'm Adam Steinfurth. This is a prolific Oak Tree channel. And uh, let's talk about Google Sheets. So these are the six types of smart chips and each one of them is mapped directly to a specific Google service. So if I come over here, well, let me go to Google Drive. If I go to Google Drive and I click on these nine dots, they're all going to be services that appear in here. Okay, so uh, we can connect to the calendar now with a smart chip, we can connect the contacts, YouTube, so forth. So let's go back to Google Sheets so here they are, and before we dig into using each one, we'll talk about the two different methods that you can use to extract data from them. One's not really better than the other, okay? So as we go through this, you'll see I've, I'll kind of use both methods depending on what I want to accomplish. But uh, let's get a smart chip into here first. And uh, an easy way to do that would be to type the at sign, and we'll just pick an event here. It's really the title of a location, but it's a calendar event you can see from the icon. Click below it. That's a smart chip inserted into Google Sheets. And the two ways to extract data from it, uh, the more obvious one is to select the cell. So in this case, it's E6. So I clicked on that with my mouse. And you go to Data, Data Extraction, and you get a sidebar on the right-hand side. And this is all of the types of data that you can extract from this specific type of chip. All right, so if it were a file chip or a people chip or something different, these extractions would be completely different. So they're specific to the type of chip. And if you want to see all of them listed out, uh, I'll link to this page in the description. This is a sister site, sheetshelp.com, and uh, it talks about each one of them here. So we're looking at event chip right now. So you can see it's these one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight options. Let's see how many of them we can pull out. So we'll select them all. The extract to is just kind of defaults to the cell to the right. And since I selected more than one, it'll keep going to the right. So it'll be an F6, G6, uh, et cetera. Press extract pulls them all out and it wants you to authorize some of them. So we'll click the check mark and here we are. So this is all data that just got pulled into Google Sheets from Google Calendar, all right? So uh, we have, let's go to the right one in the cell F6 and you can see this formula here and that's actually a preview of the second way to extract this data. So we'll go just below and we'll redo this. If I wanted to uh, extract the data from E6, if you hit a period, you get all the selections right here. Okay, so one thing that that does is if you wanna work faster just with the keyboard, you don't have to use the mouse and this graphical user interface of the sidebar. You can completely bypass that. And you could uh, pull out data extractions from inside of another formula using this syntax. So that's why this could be handy. And we can just choose one of these for now. We'll go back above in a second, hit enter. All right, so that's the two different ways to do data extractions. And now that we've covered that, we're actually going to go into specifically event chips. So just a naming convention on this, they're all called smart chips, but each type of chip is called event chip not event smart chip. Um, I don't know, you could call it that if you wanted to, but it didn't see, seem that, like the documentation was calling it that. So I'm gonna call this an event chip, file chip, etc. Let's just uh, delete this, clean it up, and we're going to go over on a clean worksheet and play around with the event chip to see what you can do with it. So we'll click on this. This is uh, me having fun here to prepare for the video. I'll delete this so we can start over. But before I do this, what I want to do is I'm going to take this browser window, I'm going to put it on the left hand, no, I'm not, where'd it go? I'm going to put it on the left hand side of the screen. And then I'm going to take my Google Calendar, I'll peel it off here, and I'll put it on the right hand side of the screen. So this way you can see, let me go to next week. You can see the, uh, 
we'll call it the source. Well, we'll call it the destination. You can see Google Sheets as the destination and you'll be able to see Google Calendar as the source. Okay, so we're going to act like this is what I'm doing next week. So I put these in here, I just made them up. But we're let's say I'm an accountant, right? And I'm doing uh, bookkeeping work for these clients, different types of work. We have that listed, you'll see. Different types of work for these clients and I wanna analyze it in a spreadsheet. Right? If you're an accountant, you do everything in a spreadsheet. That's where you're comfortable. So we're going to pull these into Google Sheets with, with event ships. So uh, let's just type the at sign. So to get a smart chip, type the at sign and just start typing the name of the event. Hanks. All right. Hanks Dairy Barn. All right, so I found that, I clicked on it, and this is a smart chip. You can also tell that it's a smart chip because it has this pill-shaped gray background on it. So we're ready to go. I'm gonna close this sidebar because we're not gonna use that. And what we'll do is we're going to, actually, let's go pull all of these events in and then I'll show you what we're going to do. So I will go back here and I'll type fills. All right, so that's the next five appointments that I have. So this will cover, let's say I'm looking at early next week, what I want to do. And let's pull everything out in here. Let's extract it all. So we will hit an equal sign. We'll go over to A2. We'll type a dot. And the first thing that we want is the URL. So I'll click enter there. And then I'm going to drag that formula down. So this is kind of one of the advantages of doing it in formulas is that you can work like you would in any other formulas. So you kind of work faster. And what these URLs do for you is if you click on them, it will bring you back around to calendar and highlight that event. Okay, so if there's something that you don't have, uh, or if you're ready to drive there on your phone and you click on this, it will bring you right there. So then you can then click on it to go to Google Maps. All right, so for the description, you could guess how we're gonna do this. We're gonna hit a dot. And why don't you know one of the Extractions is called description. We'll give that permission. We'll drag this down. Do start date. And when calendar has a field called date, it's actually date and time, which you'll see is important later. We'll do end date. Early end date and time. The duration field is something that we'll use in a second. In the starting location, we're going to do something tricky here. The ending location, so we're saying we have to drive to these places, right? So we'll say A2 and just location, hit enter. We'll pull the locations in for all of these appointments. And as we do this, you're seeing this data is only as good as what you put in the calendar in the first place. So if you're, you kind of have to be a power user of Google Calendar, right? So you need to have all these, you'll probably have the times in there, um, but you need to make sure you have the locations right in the descriptions if you want to do everything you're seeing here. Uh, but now that you have this listed in a more comfortable format, because we're assuming you like Google Sheets, if you're pulling calendar data into Sheets, um, it's because you want to work with it. So we're going to do some fun things here. One thing that we're going to do is we're going to calculate durations. So this would be the, the time that these meetings took, right? Because if you're an accountant, you might bill for your time. So we will simply take um, E2 and we'll subtract the beginning time in D2. And that gives us the fraction of one day. You see the formatting here is actually displaying it as two hours and 30 minutes, but that's not the same as the number 2.5. So I need to change it to that by multiplying it by 24. And I had changed this duration before I filmed, but I really just want it as a number. All right, so we are going to copy that. So that's the number of hours for these meetings. And now I can analyze how we're going to spend our time. And we'll do that here in a query formula that I already wrote, because this is about smart chips and not about formulas. And I just need to make a quick adjustment to this. 
let's say, yeah, like that. So coming up in the next couple of days, I'm going to spend three hours doing due diligence, two and a half on month end close for clients and five and a quarter in payroll. So that's a really handy way to kind of forecast what you're going to be doing or really to summarize what you did in the past, depending on what you bring into your spreadsheet. Uh, so we'll delete that. And then one more uh, way that we can play around with this data before we move on to the next type of smart chip is to kind of plan our route. So if you want to know your mileage or maybe plan how much time you'll be in a car, what you could do is uh, let's put in a starting location here. I'll just find one on Google Maps. I made these around Columbus, Ohio. So let's go to, let's go to Pickerington. And choose Dairy Queen because wouldn't that be great to live at Dairy Queen? I'm going to copy that. Let's say that's our starting location. So we end here. All right, so this is your day's driving. You have your all of your starting locations, all of your ending locations. And we'll start, let me make this browser window a little bit larger. We'll start an add-on that I had developed. We'll say use the existing sheet to do this. Our starting addresses are in G2 through 5. Our ending addresses are in H2 through 5. We want miles, distance, and time. And let's say we're driving. All right, so this add-on also saved us a lot of time because it calculated the distance for each one of them and the amount of time that we're going to spend driving. And actually, if I run that again, I'm going to include a little link to the route. And if you look at that, you even have your directions. All right, so we've covered event chips pretty in depth. We're going to move on to file chips. And this is a connection to Google Drive, which is where you might be storing a lot of your files. I store a lot of my files in Google Drive. So uh, this can be pretty useful. So we'll go on to a dedicated worksheet here where I've already been having a hoot and holler in good time. We'll delete this. Got a little cheat sheet here of what I'm gonna do. Uh, but what I found out that you could do, which is pretty neat, is we're going to go kind of to a higher level, like a parent folder here that contains other items. So we'll go into Sheets Help. If you go to a folder, and then select share from there. We'll click on that and grab that link. So we're going to copy the link, click done, go back in the smart chips, paste that. And it's saying press tab to replace that with the file chip called filter video. So I'll hit tab. Now, even though this is a file chip, it also works on folders. And if we want to see the available data extractions, and I want to write them all out, so we're going to use the GUI. So we'll go to data, data extractions, and here they are. We can get the file name, the MIME type, which is kind of the file type, uh, the location or the link to the file, time it was made, modified, etc. Hit extract. And this is all of the data from that folder, including a people chip of the person who did some of these things. I know this guy, that is me. So we have a file chip extracting something that's a people chip. So now let's go into this folder. We'll select all of these. We will copy the links, paste them, and then we get them in a long string so we can run the split function on that string of text. We can say split it on the comma space, close it off, and then now we have all of our files. So I have to turn these into file chips. And it's giving me a little bit of a hard time, so I'm going to copy it and paste them just as values. Now let's try it. We'll do insert 
smart chip file. Okay, that's working. I'll highlight all of them. Insert smart chip file. Okay, now that I have these, let's say I want to analyze the people that made them. So that would be, oh, I don't know about made them. We'll say the owner. Let's look at that. Drag it over there. And then we will also look at the type. I want to analyze this data, so I'm going to take a second here to rearrange it a little bit. I'm going to move it around. So now that you have all of the file data in a table, you can do any type of analysis you want on let's say uh, how many video files uh, Adam owns or what's the latest modified date of all the text files. So that's file chips. Let's go on to the next part. Google Finance. So Google Finance is a bit unique in that it is a smart chip so you can convert a stock symbol or uh, you know, the uh, mutual fund or something to a smart chip you can hover over it and see the price but you actually can't extract anything from it there is a google finance function and you should use that instead so it has a lot of abilities that would overlap if it was a smart chip so it is a smart chip but you just can't do anything with it the next type of smart chip is a people chip so this connects to google contacts so we'll go over to uh, this worksheet Google Sheets now has the ability to connect with Gmail so that you can do a mail merge and send emails out to kind of a batch of people at once. So let's say that uh, you know someone's name. So we'll say uh, Arnaldo, All right? We're going to click on him and then his email comes into here because you link to it from SmartChip. Would hit enter? And you could do this with all of your contacts. And then once you highlighted them all, so I have some already done over here to the left, you could go over to Gmail, start an email. If you use mail merge, then you can add them from a spreadsheet. All right, so lots of cool things that you can do with people chips. I'll link to a video right now on more information on how to do that mail merge. And we'll take a quick look at the other data extractions from a people chip. And keep in mind though, as you're seeing these, not all of these extractions are available in a personal Google account. So you do need to sign up for Google Workspace for some of these. Um, and it really, if you think about it, a lot of these are more business oriented, right? If you have a long list of contacts and you're looking to get in touch with them, a lot of times that's done in a business environment, so it kind of makes sense that it's in Workspace. Um, and I have a Workspace account here that I'm showing you this from. So you can do email, phone, title, and location. So if I try to do location for this person, I hit enter. It actually doesn't come through. And I showed this on purpose just to kind of let you know that these are a little bit finicky, at least they are right now. Um, these are all fake contacts that I made, so I'm not using the personal data of real people, but they at least have a state in the contact field. So unless you have it filled out a certain way, it may not come in when you're using the people chip, uh, but they are handy. So use them, try them out, see if they work for you. When I hover over this person and I select open detailed view, then it'll bring it up in the sidebar and I can see that they're from Kentucky. All right, I would have expected that to come up when I did the location, but it doesn't. So now we'll move on to place chips. We'll click over here and we'll insert a smart chip. So I'll just say at, I'll start typing an address. William Street is what comes up. We'll leave that in there. And now that this is a smart chip, we will hover over it. And you see, this isn't technically a data extraction, but you can view directions. So that's really handy, right? If you click on that and it comes up in the sidebar and you can tell it where you're starting from, and that will give you directions to that location. 
the true data extraction that's available is that when you uh, hit the period here, you can insert a URL. So what this is, is well, I'll just show you. If you click on it, it'll bring you over to Google Maps and this will load up the location and then can give you all of the abilities of Google Maps once you're in it. So if you uh, wanted to look at it in a more in-depth way, that link will bring you out of Google Sheets and over to Google Maps. That, that add-on that I showed earlier, that is Trip Tally, that will still work whether or not these are smart chips or just text. So don't let that stop you from using it. Let me close that and show you the last smart chip. I'll put smart in air quotes on this one because this one is kind of goofy. Let's say we have a video called Google Sheets Full Tutorial. So if I wanted to find that, it doesn't come up in the GUI. That's not too surprising because there's so many YouTube videos, right? That how would it know that you're looking for it? It probably just doesn't put them in there because it doesn't want to clutter it. So you have to start with the URL of the video. So we'll just do the one on smart chips here. I'll grab the video link. We'll put that video link into sheets and it says press tab to replace it with the smart chip. All right, so I'll do that. The smart chip's kind of cool. It just gives you a hover card and uh, well, it actually starts previewing the video. I didn't know it would do that. And when you click on it, brings you back to YouTube. Uh, but the funny thing is that the only data extraction from it is the URL, but you need the URL to paste into sheets to turn it into a smart chip. So I'm not sure what the value is of extracting the URL back out when you had to have it to put the smart chip in anyway. Uh, there's probably a reason, right? Or they wouldn't put it in there, but I'm not sure what it is. What would be nice if you could extract, uh, you know, views or average uh, retention time or all the nice stats that are available if you are the actual owner of the videos. You could do some nice data analysis in Google Sheets, but for right now, all you can do with the YouTube chip is look at the URL. That's all right, better than nothing, right? So we'll click on that to get it out of the way. And next we're going to have a little bit of fun and we're going to see if we can use every single date function available. I think there's 25 of them in one worksheet. Buggle up, that's next. <laughs>